The Mount Zion Baptist Church is a word-centered ministry designed to evangelize the lost at any cost, equip and empower the people of God, and provide holistic ministry to our community as well as the world. Seeking to minister to the total person, we are a multi-ethnic, multicultural ministry impacting the world in which we live with the uncompromising message of Jesus Christ. Committed to the spirit of excellence, we are striving to become an oasis of hope within the Nashville community by promoting and providing education, awareness, as well as financial independence. We believe that God must be worshiped in spirit and truth. We embrace freedom in worship because the word says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Our foundation is the word of God and we believe it in its entirety. We believe we can do what it says we can do, be who it says we can be and have what it says we can have. Praise the Lord in this house. Praise the Lord everybody. Do yourself a favor, jump out of your seat, find yourself two or three people that you did not come with. Shake a hand, give a hug, give a high five, and tell them I'm glad to see you. Say, I'm glad to see you in the name of Jesus. That's it, that's it. Find somebody else, greet somebody with Jesus joy. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Find somebody else, don't leave nobody untouched. Shake a hand and tell them I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you made it into worship. Hallelujah. As you make your way back to your seat, come back rejoicing because not only did you make it to worship, but you made it to the last Sunday of the year. Nobody can tell a testimony about your year like your praise. Your praise tells a story that chronicles the work of God over 52 Sundays. Tell somebody, I don't know if I would have made it if I didn't have my praise. If I didn't have my hallelujah. I lost a lot of things. I may have lost people. I may have lost a job. I may have lost an opportunity. But if you never lost your praise, go ahead and send it up to Jesus in this place. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. While I'm inside of this day, there are troubles of today. There's rain and ugly weather, but there's also rejoicing. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I said I will. I'm waiting on 40 of you. I will rejoice. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Somebody in this place, do yourself a favor. Lift your hands, lift your voice, and shout out hallelujah. There are people that didn't believe you would live to see today. There are people that didn't believe you would make it to this moment. But tell somebody, I made it, I made it, I made it. I made, oh, I made it, I made it, through trials I made it. Through sickness I made it. Through being broke I made it. Through being more broke I made it. Somebody didn't think you had gas in your car to get to worship. But I made it. You ought to rub back your voice and scream in the enemy's face. You can't stop me, devil. I made it. That's why I give him all the glory. That's why I give him all the honor. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, it don't take nothing but a thought. And all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Somebody let your soul cry out. Let your soul cry out. Let your soul, you needed this. I know you needed this. You've been holding in that praise since winter, spring, summer, fall. But you back in the house of the Lord. Celebrate Jesus. I said celebrate. I'm still waiting on 30 of you. Celebrate Jesus. God, you're a good God. You're a worthy God. You're an able God. I didn't think I was going to make it. I know my neighbor didn't think I was going to make it. But look at me now. You ought to take the roof off. I know you're saving your praise for New Year's, but you might as well leave a little bit of it now. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands and help us celebrate Jesus on this glorious day. This is a glorious day and we will rejoice. I, I can't lose that yet. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come and help us give God the glory. Clap your hands like this. Come on. Stop! 
2019, wrapped up, shackled up, chained up, but if you could tell your own testimony, no longer bound, they wouldn't believe you if you said it, but no more chains holding me, two or three people in this story, in this room, got a story about drug addiction, alcohol addiction, gambling addiction, but you're no longer bound. I need two or three people to praise God with me. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. I said my 
soul is resting. It's just a blessing. I don't see enough hands in there. Pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Now you got 30 seconds to lift up a free praise. I know how your praise looks when you're bound. I know how your praise looks when your arms won't go up. But now you know that your testimony is that you got a God who decided to look down beyond your faults and see your need. You got to test this praise still look bound. But if you could tell your story of the last decade only using your praise, somebody let us see that story. Come on. Tell your story. I said tell your story. Say I love you, say Yes. 
together and give God praise all around the building. Come on, you can do better than that. Help me celebrate Jesus today. I want you to do me a favor. You made it to the 52nd week of the year. If the devil had his way, you wouldn't be here today. Just take a moment and give God a wave offering all around the building. Tell God, thank you for allowing me to make it today. You ought to thank God for not allowing your own self to be held up in bondage. You ought to give glory to God. celebrate the fact that we made it to the 52nd week of the year but I want you to hear me there's so many people concerned about 2020 that they're neglecting 2019 you still got a few more days left in this year to get some things right somebody say yes there's some things that you dealt with all year long that you need to leave in this year somebody say yes I hear you, Holy Ghost. There are some people in this year that you've dealt with that you need to leave in this year. Somebody say yes. Right where you are, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just turn to somebody and grab their hands. Turn to somebody. Want somebody, turn to them. Hold their hands. Hold their hands. Two by two. Two by two. Two by two. Two by two. Come on. One, two. Two by two. Come on. You're like, oh my God, it's just three of us. Fine. Two by two. By two. If you need one person, raise your hand. It's going to make sense in a second. If there's a third person in your group, kick the third person out. Now, who the third person in your group? All right, I want you to do me a favor right where you are. I want you to say, neighbor, my name is, tell them your name. I want you to tell them, neighbor, in this moment, I'm about to pray for you, and I'm asking that you pray for me. Now here's the deal. What I want you to pray for, I don't want you to pray for a house, I don't want you to pray for a car, I don't want you to pray for a boo, I don't want you to even pray for upgrade, hear me. I want you to pray for peace of mind. I want you to pray that whatever needs to be left in 2019 will be left in 2019 so that God will get all of them in 2020. Somebody say yes. Let's go to God in prayer right now. Come on, pray for your neighbor right now. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for your neighbor right now. Pray, pray. Come on. 
Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Pray. Even on the praise team, I need you to pray. Pray for your neighbor. Come on, pray. 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 Come on, open up your mouth. Pray. 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 Come on, open up your mouth, people of God. Pray. 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 Somebody's been dealing with it all year long. It's time to release it today. Pray. Somebody's been faced with a generational curse. It's time to let it go today. Somebody pray, pray, pray. Somebody's being manipulated in your mind even now, thinking that it's okay to throw in the towel. The devil is a liar. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Somebody's contemplating the spirit of suicide. It's even in this house. You're contemplating suicide. I cancel that assignment in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you the last Sunday of the year. We're lifting your name on high, Lord God, asking for something that you said we can have so freely, a peace of mind that surpasses all understanding. I'm asking, Lord God, that you will bless each and every one of us, individually and collectively, with a peace, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God be upon us. The peace of God carry us. The peace of God keep us. The peace of God guide us. The peace of God lead us. The peace of God cover us. In the name of Jesus, we ask for peace, Lord God. Whatever it is that plagued us in 2019, Lord God, we leave it in 2019 in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We go into 2020 with a new peace, with a found peace in Christ. We go into 2020, Lord God, in the love of God. We go into 2020, Lord God, knowing that you are keeping us all the way through. For you are still our shepherd that has led us. You are still our shepherd that is keeping us. You are still our shepherd that has taken us through the valley of the shadow of death and carrying us to the mountain highs so we thank you for that peace that surpasses all understanding we thank you lord god for keeping us in the midst of the storm lord god peace be in our finances lord god peace be with our children and our children's children lord god whether they're in a home with us or away lord god peace be in our on our jobs lord god peace be in our heart lord god peace be with us even for the ones that we've lost and peace be for those that we t that we move away from, that we leave behind. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless God and amen. Hug your neighbor beside you and tell him it's already done. Tell him it's already done. Come on, hug your neighbor and tell him it's already done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's receive this amazing music ministry.
to pray. We are not telling him here. of the Lord. We're grateful to God and we thank God for each one of you today. God is truly an awesome, awesome God. And I can tell just by being here, somebody's excited to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody who's excited. We greet you in divine love. We thank God for you. And wherever you're watching around the world, know that we appreciate you and thank you so much uh, for being here at the Mount Zion Church, wherever you're watching. Help me thank God for our worldwide audience right now. Come on, worldwide. If you happen to be visiting with us today for the first time, we don't consider you a visitor. We consider you family here at Mount Zion. And if this is your first time, we just want to put something in your hand to let you know how much we appreciate you. You don't have to say anything. We just want to let you know we got some information about our church. We would love to have in your hands. If it's your first time, if you don't mind standing, do that for us right now and our ushers will find you. Mount Zion, put your hands together. Help me thank God. Help me thank God. Ah, I tell you, I'm so grateful to God, and we're thankful for all that God is doing. Let me tell you, uh, and once you get that, you may be seated. We are grateful. We are so excited about uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Uh, it's going to be one of the most powerful experiences, spiritual experiences you will have. Uh, we go into not just a new year, but a new decade. And those who are spiritual understand what that means. We're shifting into a new decade. And we here at Mount Zion, we go in giving God the glory. We've given you three opportunities to join us. One is at 5 o'clock at our Antioch location. The other is at 8 o'clock at our Antioch location. And the final one is at this location at 10 p.m. as we usher in the brand new year of 2020. Part of that 
is we want you to not only come yourself, but I want you to fill your car up, bring all your cousins, all your family members. Go find some friends and say, ride with me somewhere. Just come with me for a minute and then just end up here. Amen. I promise you, they will be blessed as a result of it. It's going to be a tremendous time, uh, and I cannot wait to share with you the word that God has given me to share, not only the word, but also the prophetic word that God has given me to share with this house. And I'm telling you, it's just a burden in my spirit to release it, and I know it's going to just shift us into another uh, dimension in the things of God. We also, all of our leaders, um, we have a required leadership training on September, um, January 11th, 2020. We want you to be a part of this uh, at this location from 9 to 1. Even if you have not been involved in ministry, but you would like to be, maybe you want to volunteer, maybe you want to usher next year, be a part of any aspect of ministry, you can do that and just come to this and say, I want to learn how to connect. I want to be a part of this leadership training. We invite you to be a part. So even if you've not done anything yet and you're thinking about doing it, come to this because you'll at least be under uh, the same anointing and the culture of this ministry as we move forward in excellence and uh, in a spirit of hospitality. So we're grateful to God for that. We're also very grateful to see Elder Daryl Telefero with us today. Isn't that a blessing? Elder, come and greet us. So good to see you, man. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. When I was growing up, my mother and my father, I told my sisters and I, when somebody does something nice to you, tell them thank you. The month of December has been a very challenging month for my sisters and I. Beginning of the month, my father was admitted to the hospital and two weeks later, he passed away. It was a devastating blow for my family. Yet Mount Zion, you prayed for us and I wanna tell you thank you. When my family and I planned the services, immediately works were being done to plan a trip or a bus to come up here or come up to Indiana to celebrate with my family. I wanna tell you thank you. Those who got on the bus and traveled seven hours, who got in the car to travel seven hours to be with my family and I, thank you. I especially wanna thank you for the cards, the emails, the IG messages, the Facebook messages, the plans, whatever you did, thank you. Most importantly, I wanna thank my pastor, Bishop Walker, my first lady, first lady Walker. Amen. They stood with us through the entire process. Not only did they come to the funeral, but they also came to the burial and stood with my family and I as we laid our father to rest. People don't have to be nice. And when they are, it's your responsibility to tell them, thank you. So to each and every one of you, to my pastor, to my first lady, thank you so much. Please keep our family lifted in prayer. Amen. Bless you, man. And uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous witness to see the love that um, they showed for his father and to see his siblings. And he had just celebrated their father's 90th birthday and they threw him a wonderful reception, surprised him. And it just spoke to the character of that family and who Elder is. We love you, man. We got you covered. We thank God for you. Amen. So we appreciate you so much. As we go into uh, a new year uh, on Tuesday, this is our End Strong Sunday. And it's more than just saying I'm ending strong. It's really, I'm putting the exclamation point behind this year. I'm saying, God, I thank you that I made it to the 52nd Sunday of 2019. Anybody here <laughs> grateful for that? A part of that is now you have an opportunity because God has been so incredibly awesome to us and good to us. You have an opportunity now to end strong and how we give to God. I believe as we prepare our hearts, you know, the beauty of the grace of God is if you've gone all year long, 51 weeks without tithing, you could at least do it this Sunday and say, Lord, I got one in in 2019. You really can do it. <laughs> you know, you can really give liberally to God. I'm going to be asking you to sow a liberal seed today 
today in your offering as we end strong, whatever the Lord leads on your heart to sow. And then, of course, the vision. Um, don't forget in the a vision envelope on, on right vision, put all in. Continue to sow in that area and give in that area. We believe God, amen, for what he has in store for this ministry. Mount Zion has been a blessing to you that I know, amen, you know this is good ground. So we're thankful for those of you watching. We know you're with your family. Some of you are streaming in various places and we just know that we appreciate you so much and as you're there you can give and join us in this opportunity on the screen is the way you can text to give if you choose to do that the technology is a blessing and you can give by text uh, you can use an envelope if you want one of those uh, ushers will come through as well a kiosk outside you can give so any platform amen and we thank God you can also give by neighbor in other words if you ain't got done just look at the person next to you and say hook me up they'll help you <laughs> <laughs> you see, you buy so many blessed people today. Amen. And, but uh, I tell you what, we're going to prepare our hearts right now. Father, thank you uh, for the privilege we have right now to give. Bless every household, every family. And we thank you for the spirit of generosity that sweeps this house. And we pray blessings be upon every business, every uh, career, every academic pursuit, every family. We thank you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. I have a few reminders for you. The offices will be closed until January 7th. If you have an emergency, please call 615-254-7296, extension 5. Also, we will not have Bible study until January 8th. You can ring in 2020 with us at one of our three New Year's Eve services. We hope you'll make plans to bring your family and join us. Speaking of 2020, Let's take a peek at what's coming in the new year. Biblical studies are largely centered on canon formation and exegesis. Learners become acquainted with history, literature, linguistics, textual analysis, sociology, and the biblical languages. In addition, you will gain an understanding of the cultures and people groups involved in the relevant periods of history at play throughout the text, such as Judaism, Christianity, and even paganism. Theo in the Greek means God, thus theology is the study of God. Theology courses enriches one's understanding of the faith and the God of our faith, who is Yahweh. It looks for the interplay between the various texts to understand how the whole of a religion may view things and ideas or develop beliefs. Theology also examines the ways various texts have been understood throughout history its key thinkers and its influence on ethical debates and the actions of its believers. Having a deeper understanding of our faith and our sacred text makes us more informed and confident of who we are and whose we are. Remember to download today's sermon notes on the Mount Zion app or ask an usher for a paper copy. Thank you for choosing to worship with us here at the Mount. Praise the Lord again. Listen, touch neighbor, say neighbor, I went through a lot this year, but I made it. Come on, tell somebody else, say I made it. Hey Amen. You don't know your neighbor's testimony. You don't know what they went through to get here. But a sign of them lifting their hands just lets you know that they're, that they're here. Amen. Come on, lift your hands right there. Lift your hands and open your mouth. God, we worship your name. God, we adore you. This song says, because my worship, my worship is for real. Do I have a witness in this place? Because my worship, because my worship, my worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say you don't know, you don't know my story. 
All the things that I've been through. All the things that I've been through. Say you can feel my pain. You can feel my pain. What I had to go through. What I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure it out. Because my worship, because my worship, my worship is for real. My worship is for real. Say it one more time. Because my worship, because my worship, my worship is for real. My worship is for real. Now testify. Come on, say it. Say it. I've been through too much. Not to worship him. Come on, sing it. I've been through too much. Not. I've got to worship him. Come on, say it again. I've been through too much. Not. I've got to worship him. Do I have a witness in this place? I've been through too much. Not to worship Him. So let's lift up the highest praise. Come on. Oh, we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is for real. We say hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We come today to say our worship is for real.
this level of worship. My life paid for this. Because my worship. Say this ain't no play thing. Been through too much to play, y'all. Been through too much to play. But this thing is real. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we are ready now. Lord, we are grateful now. We are thankful now for all that you brought us through. God, we, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We stand in tiptoe anticipation for what you're going to do in this place. So as only you know how, speak to our hearts, move in our lives, that we might receive this revelation, and we believe it's already done. In the name above every name, the name Jesus, and every heart said amen. The 27th chapter of Acts of the Apostles, beginning at verse 39. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed the bay with the beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go of the anchors and left them in the sea, meanwhile loosing the rubber, the rudder ropes. And they hoisted the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground. And the prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim away and escape, but the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. Tell somebody I'm thanking him for what's left. Yeah, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. In life, there is a tendency for many of us to focus on the glass being half empty. Our often default is to shift our attention to those things that are going wrong, negative adverse in our lives that we fail to remember that the spirit of optimism and the law of positive thinking teaches us that no matter what our circumstances look like, those of us who are believers should shift our focus to those things that are good. The scripture affirms this in Philippians 4 and 8 by declaring, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Today, we're going to see the Apostle Paul in a situation that looks hopeless. And we're going to see in the hopeless situation, in a broken situation, how God yet is at work because God always has a plan for his people regardless of the circumstances. And it is important to know when we look at this today and the storm and the violence of the storm we're going to witness today, it's important to know that when you are a child of God, you have to know that God has already made provisions for your deliverance. What is important to know at the beginning of this message is who you are. Because when you know who you are, 
it becomes clear whose you are. And then there is a declaration. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And the declaration we have to make at the beginning of this message is this. That I am God's anointed and I have an assignment on my life. Can you declare this over your life? I'm God's anointed. And I have an assignment on my life. Let's try it this way. Somebody say, I am anointed. And I have an assignment on my life. Now, we'll come back to that. But in order for us to really understand this text today, we'll look at it critically. What we see in chapter 27 is actually the culmination of what began in chapter 25. To understand the Apostle Paul's journey to chapter 27, you must understand that it is the Apostle who has now been converted. Paul, on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter 9, you may recall, has a conversion experience. He was one who violently and vehemently hated Christians. He killed many believers and bragged about it. But on the Damascus Road, he would have a conversion experience that would transform his life and the same energy, the same passion that he had to kill Christians. Now he spends the remainder of his life lifting up the Christ to whom he tried to destroy. Paul's passion after conversion is so powerful. It is so prolific. He writes a third of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul's conversion experience is so powerful that when he begins to speak, it is so passionate that he wants to share it every single place he goes. Please understand that in Acts chapter 25, Paul is brought before Festus. Now, I want you to see these progressions as if going before a mayor and then a governor and then the president. Festus first. One of the leaders, Festus, Paul has to stand before. Now, he has been filled with information prior to Paul's arrival from the Jews who have given Festus an erroneous report concerning Paul. Some people will tell people things about you that are untrue to try to create a false narrative so when you show up, you wonder why they're looking at you crazy because your enemies got to them first. But Paul shows up, and when he shows up, Paul begins to defend his convictions concerning the Christ. Now, a defense of Christianity is, is called an apology. It's the apologetics in theology. It's when we defend our belief. And what is interesting now is that Paul, the Jewish leaders, wanted Paul transferred to Jerusalem because they had plans to ambush him and kill him on the way. But remember, when you are anointed and you have an assignment on your life, whatever schemes and plots of the enemy that come against you, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. During his audience before Festus in Acts chapter 25, we discover that Paul makes a request in verses 2 and 3, he makes an unusual request. He says, I desire an audience with the emperor. I desire to go before Caesar in Rome. Who makes such an audacious claim, an audacious request? I mean, you're an apostle of Jesus Christ, and you want to go and stand before Augustus Caesar in Rome and you want to share your convictions concerning the Christ remember he is anointed and he has an assignment listen carefully and so Festus after interrogating the apostle Festus finds nothing that Paul has done deserving of death so he then sends him to Agrippa Notice the progressions as if you're going from a mayor now to the governor. King Agrippa, it is there in Acts chapter 26, Paul stands before Agrippa where he now presents his defense of Christianity as he did before Festus. And Paul maintains, I'm a good Jew, I am a good Roman citizen, and Paul's speech is so persuasive, it is so passionate, it is so powerful that Agrippa, after hearing the words of Paul, 
Agrippa declares in Acts 26 and verse 28, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Paul standing before Agrippa and Agrippa declares that I find no fault in this man. Actually, it is Agrippa who sends back word to Festus and literally says to him in Acts 26 and verse 32, this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. I could release him now, but he wants to go and take this message to Augustus. I could free him right now, but his assignment won't let me. I'm going somewhere. And what makes this interesting, people of God, is that the apostle, when you read the Pauline works, they are called the works of Paul. You will discover words like, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Many of you who watch from time to time, but you see bishops and pastors who wear collars and they have chains that come this way. And then you wonder why are they wearing the chain this way? Their cross is over our heart. It is emblematic and symbolic of being a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Because the apostle chose to remain a prisoner when he could have been set free. But when you are compelled by your assignment, Assignment. You don't take the easy way out. You got to do what God calls you to do. The apostle, people of God now, is on a boat. Here we are in Acts 27. He is on a ship with other prisoners being guarded by Roman soldiers. And they are there. And the scripture declares that they are sailing. Now what is of note here, and you must pay attention to this, they are sailing at a time that is not popular nor even recommended to sail. You do not sail during the winter months. Actually, it is clear that sailing should never take place between mid-November and mid-March. It is the most treacherous time to sail. According to Acts 27 and 9, the scripture makes a reference that the fast had just ended. The fast, according to biblical history, took place in September and October, which means it is highly probable that they are sailing between latter November and early December. And they are sailing at a time in which it is the most tumultuous time to sail. And then a storm comes. And when this storm comes, people of God, everything that they thought, every experience that they had known about sailing and ship and going through these waters began to be challenged because it was in this moment when things got escalated and it looked like nobody was going to make it. They were going to discover what you and I have discovered, that those things that seem impossible are very possible with God. That if there is an assignment on your life and if there is an anointing on your life don't you fret yourself over all the stuff that might come at your life because when you look over what happened in 2019 and you look at the fact that you're sitting up in here right now you gotta declare the hand of God is upon your life now the safe place is interesting because what do you do when the safe place gets critical the ship is the safe place. It is the place that is known. And it is where the prisoners are. And those who are navigating the ship understand how to navigate ships, even though they are sailing at an inopportune time. What you will discover is that the location may be unknown to you, but ordained for you. The Bible opens up in verse 39 by suggesting that they had come to a place that they did not recognize. That is problematic and unusual because it is clear that sailors always were familiar with the land and areas by which they sail. But in this instance, the storm was so violent and so great that they looked up and did not recognize where they were. There are moments in your life when you have gone through a storm and you said, now I've been through a lot of stuff, but I ain't never seen this one before. Have you ever just looked up and said, Lord, where am I now? Why 
why is this happening to me now? How could something like this occur in my life right now? I need you to understand that even though you may not understand where you are, you got to know it's ordained for your life because this may be the season you got to put your total trust in God. It's in those moments when you're trying to figure things out and it's unfamiliar to you, but God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? You know, if I've kept you this far, you know I can keep you going through what you're going through right now. And what makes this interesting, the view of the water is different from being on the boat than being in the water itself. Wait a minute. The view of the water of the storm is different than being on the boat and being out of the boat looking at the water. See, when you're in a place of stability and when you're in a place of familiarity, you look at a storm differently than when that thing breaks up and now you're looking at it from outside. When you're on the job, you look at a storm differently than when they just laid you off. When you're in the relationship, you look at it differently than when it just broke up and so now you gotta trust God like never before and what they did as an act of self preservation the Bible declares is that they did what they knew to do they then begin to take the anchors and release them off of the boat now this is interesting because they understood if we're going to have any chance at making it we must rid ourselves of all the weight on this ship might I submit to to you Hebrews 12 and 1 lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us because it is difficult to keep pressing toward your destination if you have things weighing you down which is why you got to learn to let go and leave some things behind sometimes you got to let it go and leave some things behind let me say it again sometimes you got to let it go and leave. Okay, some of y'all, what you need, Frozen 1 and Frozen 2. You need Elsa to tell you. Sometimes you got to let it go and leave some things behind. You see, people of God, the reason why many of your ships, your relationships, your friendships, your fellowships are so hard to steer in the right direction because you're being weighed down by things that God never intended for you to have on your ship. And there comes a moment you've got to learn to release it. That's why in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. If it's too heavy for you to carry, you need to get rid of all the unnecessary weight in order to stay the course because here is the critical thing now you gotta stay the course somebody shout stay the course say it again say stay the course you see this is what's gonna mean the difference between you making it and you not it's your ability to stay the course because when you know there's an assignment on your life it doesn't matter all the things that are trying to throw you off your game that are trying to frustrate you and distract you you got something to do you got an assignment to complete and you can't resign you can't quit you can't give up now you gotta stay the course and here's the deal the bible declares that even when they were trying to make it work the bible declares that the forepart of the ship stuck fast and the bible said it remained unmovable and the ship was broken with the violence of the waves the thing that they had been on the thing that was their place of safety was now in a place of brokenness and here's a word for somebody it fell apart to bless you not to break you. You, you. you interpreted the brokenness as something that was sent in your life <laughs> to, 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 to break you. But no, the brokenness came in your life to reveal some things to you about yourself that you don't even know. When the ship was broken, they had to learn to take pieces and they had to learn ingenuity. See, sometimes you don't realize the ingenuity that's inside of you until you've been broken. Some of you, unless you had been broken on your job, you never would have known you were an entrepreneur. Some of you, had you never been at rock bottom, you never would have known you could pray like you pray. Some of you would have never had the life and the spirit that you have right now had it not been for your brokenness. And so you got to be willing to say, Lord, there's got to be a blessing. It's what lesson do you want me to learn? I can't be bitter and be disillusioned just because what I've been depending on is now broken. There is something valuable in being broken because in the midst of your brokenness, listen, things around you can be broken without you being broken. 
See, being broken spiritually and mentally is often the result of allowing the storm you're going through to get inside of you. And Paul was an example of someone who learned how to endure storms. This ain't no, this ain't Paul's first rodeo with having a storm or a trial in his life. I mean, it is the apostle who's been shipwrecked. He's had jail things happen. He's been broken in broken friendships. He's been snake bit, been beaten 39 times. And there's some people in this place today. People look at you, sit next to you, have no idea. Just over the last 12 months, some of the things you've had to endure just because you sit up in here and smile and look like you got it going on they have no idea some of you been fighting for your life some of you had to overcome diagnoses some of you had to deal with stuff on campus some of you had to deal with stuff in your own home some of you had to deal with stuff you were up all night struggling being laid off trying to figure out how you were going to come through this how you were going to get through this some of you were up saying lord how in the world am i dealing with this situation and people look at you showing up and think it ain't heavy because you wear it so well but baby they don't understand that it's something inside of you and they're looking at you wondering how you come together look at what you smoking what you vaping what you drinking we ain't drinking nothing we ain't vaping nothing we ain't smoking nothing we got this uniform testimony in 2 Corinthians 4 8 and 9 we are hard pressed on every side but we are not crushed we were perplexed but we're not in despair we were persecuted but not forsaken we were struck down but we are not destroyed we are still here because of the sovereign power of God that kept us let me tell you something some of y'all were just thanking God for all the gifts under the tree and thank God for all of that but there were some of us who were just giving God glory that he kept us I wish I had somebody here who could just give God glory that he kept your mind, he kept your family, he kept your ministry. I'm giving God glory that he kept me. I've had some good days, I've had some bad days, I've had some hills to climb, but when I look around, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain, God's been good to me. Shall I go back farther? When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my life, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Can I go back farther if I couldn't say a Somebody ought to give God glory. Listen, you see, you see, people of God, that's why you will discover. Listen, you will discover through the apostle. Through the Apostle Paul, that having the right people in your life is a critical decision. Salvation with the right people, the right company. Because being with the right people at the right time can save your life. You don't need all these people in your life, he he and and ha ha and and can't do nothing for you when the thing go down. You gotta have the right people at the right time. You see Proverbs, listen, chapter 16 and verse seven says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. When you on a divine assignment, <laughs> when you understand God has an anointing on your life, God will always cover you through connections. See, there's a contrast here. See, you have one instance in scripture where people need to disconnect from people out the will of God, like Jonah. Storm, Jonah on the ship, but we're going to need you to get off the ship, Jonah, because we ain't going down with you, because you out of order. But when somebody's in order, in an assignment, got an anointing, you want that person on your ship. <laughs> Somebody shout, I'm anointed, and I have an assignment. Now let me see if I can help you understand this with clarity. 
God will make your enemies respect you. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to invite me over to your little get together. But I need you to hear what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to give you this in context. This is Paul traveling, listen carefully, on a vessel on his way to Rome, being guarded by Roman soldiers. Now, understand something about Rome. Those of you who are history buffs know this. You don't have to know the Bible to know this. Rome is an advanced civilization. Not as advanced as Egypt, mind you, but incredibly advanced. And in Rome, right, it's the epicenter of military power of that day. In Rome, remember, Roman soldiers understand protocol without emotion. Roman soldiers don't deviate from orders. Remember, it was when Pilate turned Jesus over to be scourged and to be beaten. Jesus was beaten on his back by Roman torture. And there was no emotion involved because when a decree is sent to a Roman soldier, it's just another day at the office. It's what we do because we follow orders. It is what they do in Rome. So if you're being guarded by Roman soldiers, whatever Roman soldiers are told to do, that's what they do. When the ship broke to pieces, the leader of the Roman guard on the ship made an order. Kill all the prisoners lest they escape. That was a direct order. But the scripture says, but a centurion, meaning one of those who was guarding the prisoners, who should have taken the direct order, willing to save Paul, who was anointed, who was in his assignment, kept them from their purpose. You're going to get this in a minute. Because there was an anointing on the ship, even the enemy acknowledged, I can't do nothing, y'all. I, I can't touch him because he's anointed. How many times do I have to tell y'all But when you are anointed, it's like being greasy in the spirit. When they pour oil on you, you greasy. And every time the enemy tries to get a grip on you, you keep slipping. Tell somebody I'm anointed. Here is the revelation. Don't miss this. Please don't miss this. There are, this is going to bless you, people on the ship who deserve death because they are tried and convicted criminals. But it is the apostle who has literally been acquitted twice and is only on board subjecting himself to possible death because his assignment has compelled him. But he is anointed. So he's anointed and the people around him are on the ship and about to get a blessing because he there. See, I've watched the people on your job would leave you alone. I wish some of the people in your crew would leave you alone. I wish some of your haters would stop messing with you because they don't realize that their survival is tied to you being present. Touch your neighbor and tell them you sit on the right road today. Tell them because wherever I am, people around me may 
naked. I wish I had somebody, wherever I am, whatever job, whatever pew, whatever campus, whatever. It, it ain't the first time that happened. Paul and Silas in Acts 16 were in the jail cell. <laughs> Paul praised God and everybody shamed. Y'all still not getting it. Touch your neighbor and say, whatever happens to me, God just lets it happen to people around me. So baby, you might as well celebrate when God blesses me. You might as well celebrate because I'm anointed. Because everything in proximity of my blessing flows on the people who are around me. Please remember this. It may look fatal but it's not final. All the plots, all the schemes of the enemy that were coming at your life this year, all the stuff you had to endure, all the overt and covert operations. <laughs> there were things coming at you you had no idea about. All kind of agendas were trying to come and take you out. But you sitting up in here not bitter. You sitting up in here better. You got the testimony like Joseph. What you thought evil against me. God meant it for my good. And people of God, I come to tell you that God always has something available for his children. But even though it may look like it's fatal. <laughs> it's not final. Joseph was put in a pit by his brothers. It looked fatal but it wasn't final. Moses, the Israelites were standing at the Red Sea. <laughs> Pharaoh was in hot pursuit. It looked, it looked fatal, but it wasn't final. Hezekiah received the word from Isaiah, put your house in order, you're gonna die. It looked fatal, but it wasn't final. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace. It looked fatal but it wasn't final. I keep a prayer list to share with my wife in a 20 minute period this morning, standing, shaking hands in a 20 minute period. Here are the things that I had come to me, I had to pray for. People walked up to me simultaneously in line. Pray for my wife. She's got stage three cancer and it's aggressive in her breasts. I wanna tell you, it may look fatal, but it's not final. Next person stepped up <laughs> and said, my husband's brain cancer is aggressive. It is stage four. It is the worst kind you could have. They're saying it's probably 12 months to 18 months. I come to tell you, it may look fatal, but it's not final. Somebody else came up and said, Bishop, pray for me. This happened in a 20 minute period. I went for a normal exam and they tell me I got to have a new kidney. It may look fatal, but it's not final. Somebody else came up right after that and said, Bishop, I went in for a checkup and my PSA level is high and I'm a little afraid because I, I, I never had to deal with my prostate. I come to tell you, it may look fatal, but it's not final. Bishop, on what authority would you make that declaration? Well, one Friday on Calvary's Hill, it looked fatal, but early Sunday morning, thanks be to God, because my Savior got up, it was not final. And I come and declare over somebody's life that God told me to tell you, I don't care what piece of brokenness you got in your life. God told me to tell you, you got something left. And if you got something left, the rest of you is about to be the best of you. So you ought to be giving God glory that even though you may have lost this and lost that and lost this, you ought to thank God that you got your right mind. You ought to thank God that you breathe it. You ought to thank God you got a house to go to. Touch your name and tell him, I'm thanking God for what's left. Now I have two announcements. I have two announcements. 
two announcements. And these two announcements, you might have to, you might have to give your neighbor some room after this. Because these two announcements, people of God, God says, when I release these announcements, I need you to praise God like you lost your mind. The first announcement we declare as we put an exclamation point on this year is that I experienced brokenness, but it didn't break me. I want to give God glory because I should be on skin row. I should be somewhere scratching myself. I should be somewhere talking to myself. But I give God glory that even though I had brokenness around me, I thank God I'm still in my right mind. Here, here is the next announcement. But the next one, the next one, what I'm gonna need you to do I don't need you to have any kind of phobias right now. I need your faith to override your phobia. I need you to reach over, grab the person to your left by the hand, grab the, and then grab the person to your right by the hand. And I want you to squeeze that hand and tell them this is our word as we end this year and get ready for a new one. Tell them the Bible says in verse 44, that after the ship was broken to pieces and everybody took a piece of the ship, we all escaped safely to land. Tell them I'm holding your hand to remind you that we all made it. Can you give it glory? just looking for the survivors. I'm looking for somebody who can give God glory that you. I've been through the storm and the rain, but I made it. Open up your mouth and shout. Let the redeem of the Lord.
more seconds. I'm going to give you 60 more seconds. I'm going to need you to praise God like you thankful. I'm going to need you to open up your mouth. These last 60 seconds, I'm going to need you to go in like you know that you know that you know you know. Listen, let me tell you something. I shared this. I want you to hear me. I don't want you to walk. I want you to hear this. God made a way. And as a pastor, let me tell you something. I have a pastoral anointing. That, don't take that for granted. My wife will tell you, I have a pastoral, and I'm a pastor. Sometimes to a fault. <laughs> but I care about people so much. And as an overseer, pastor, overseer, bishop, overseer, don't get it twisted because of all the people that go to Mount Zion and think that pastor doesn't know. Because when I, when I go to these services and I... I, I, I look down the pew and I look at people and sometimes I look a little longer in certain areas and you wonder what is Bishop looking at? It's because I know the stories. I've walked people through things around you that you don't even realize. Some things are unimaginable, the things I've had to walk people through and watching them come in here and give God glory. And sometimes you see them shout and run. You're like, Lord, what are they doing? But see, I know the story. I'm looking at people that I've walked through diagnoses and doctors told them they had months to live and they're sitting up in here right now still. It's been years. I, I, I'm looking at people. Who they are is not important, but they know who I'm talking about. I've seen them bury their children. I've seen children die in their womb. And they have yet shown up and were still faithful giving God glory. I've seen people go through brokenness and betrayal. I've seen people who've been publicly assassinated and yet they kept showing up and giving God glory and, and they kept giving God praise and through all of that as a pastor, I sit up and I watch and I'm like, you are so amazing because God is going to honor your faithfulness. After all that brokenness you've been through, the stuff I saw you walk through, the gravesides I've stood at, the bedsides I've stood at, the courthouses I've gone through with you and your children. And Let me tell you something. God says, what I want you to do from this day forward, don't post on social media or let come out of your mouth anything you've lost. But from this moment forward, start thanking God for what's left. Stop giving free advertisement to who left you and start thanking God for what God left you. Because it's that that God's going to use. Whatever it is. It don't matter how big your piece is and how small mine is. We all made it safe. Which means that God sent this word because you with your anointed self and with the assignment on your life, you're going to make it.
to your destination. The audacity of the Apostle Paul to say, I'm going to take this gospel to a leader whose picture is on the money we spend. Caesar. I want to go tell Caesar there's one greater than you. <laughs> Talk about an assignment. And even after getting off this ship, he was snake bit and he just shook it off. Paul just kept moving and kept moving until he got to his destination. I want you to find three people and I want you to say these words, you gonna make it. You move mountains, you can cause walls to fall with your power for miracles. Now, can you lift your hands as high as you see God taking you? Impossible. And I'm understanding. Come on. Oh, come on. Just one big choir. Come on, you. So you move mountains. You cause walls to fall. service it's been amazing because there is that moment this is an exclamation point in your life it's that moment when you realize that God brought you here for a specific reason right to give you this word to put everything in proper context Paul had a relationship with Jesus Christ and that's why he was covered you need a relationship with Jesus Christ Paul was willing to die for it we need you to live for it can you do that Jesus loves you and it doesn't matter what you've done. He wants a relationship. Even if you strayed away, here's a great time to say, Jesus, I'm giving my life back to you. I'm getting right back where I need to be because after all the things that could have happened to me, you made a way. If you're here today and you've been praying about a church home and you say, I need to be where I can grow in the spirit of God. Let me tell you something. The beauty about Mount Zion is that it's not about denomination. It's not about color. We just are full of everybody. We just love people. So we just see the blood of Jesus Christ. And so it doesn't matter what your story, your situation or your ethnicity or where you come. It's just about you being a part of a family who loves people. And if you're here maybe for school or work and you need a church home in Nashville, we want you to make that decision 
decision right now. Listen, what I want you to do, I'm going to give you two minutes. I want you to get your belongings if you're in the balcony or on this floor. And I want you to meet me at this altar. I want you to walk like you, the survivor that you are. And I want you to declare with the rest of me, it's going to be the best of me. Right now, I want you to move right now. Come on, I'm waiting on you. We're going to rejoice when you come. We're going to rejoice. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right now, right now, come on. I want you to move quickly. I want you to come. That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Right now, I see you. I see you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. and I'm done but I don't want you to let this service in and allow yourself to sit there knowing that God has ordered your steps remember there is an assignment on your life there is an anointing on your life and after all the conspiracies overt and covert to try to take you out out of all the brokenness you've gone through God left you something and that's what you're going to hold on to and that's what's going to propel you into your next dimension. That's power and connection. And this last 30 seconds, church, I need you to pray because I declare and decree that nobody will leave here and perish. We all going to make it to land. And today, if you could get out of your comfort, see, what has been comfortable for you has been broken on purpose. It was ordained by God for you to trust God with what was left so right now step out of your comfort zone and walk into your next season with God church are you praying that 30 seconds starts right now I need you to move come right now right now if I'm talking to you right now if I'm talking to you don't miss this moment God makes no mistakes he orders our steps at the right place at the right time I don't need a permission slip from people to be where God told me to be. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I see you. Come on, church. I need you to thank God. Thank God. Come on, church. Would you help me thank God? Come on. He left you something. He left you something. He left you something. He left you something. I want you to put those hands together and help me thank God. Every person at this altar, there is a story, there is a journey that brought you here, and it is not by accident, and God's going to use the rest of you to become the best of you. We welcome you to this place. I want you to go right down this middle aisle, Mount Zion, help me thank God for every single person. Come on, come on, every single person at this altar God is so faithful I am so thankful listen as we get ready to leave together I want you to make an effort I want you to make certain that on Tuesday you absolutely bring you your family 
bring everybody. Bring the dog. Just leave the dog out there. Just, just time up. Yeah, better than need a breakthrough. I'm just kidding about the dog. You know? Yeah, I'm just kidding about the dog. But you understand what I'm saying. Don't miss, don't listen, don't be somewhere that you're going to be out the will of God. Also, I want to thank you finally for the privilege and the honor of serving another year as your pastor. I don't take it for granted. It is with great humility that I serve you for the glory of God. And I want you to always know I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. You hear me? I'm going to be there for you. We're going to be there for you because we are a family. And we thank God for what God is going to do as we move into 2020 together. Amen. We'll be outside shaking hands and we'd love to shake yours. Father, thank you. We love you. We give your name the glory and praise for your word today, for allowing us to receive this word that we got to thank you for what's left. As we go down from this place and never your presence, continue to cover and keep us. God, lead and direct us. Give us traveling grace until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.